Monday. Message 3. Señor Ángel, ah, no sé si marqué el, el número correcto, ¿no? Este, habla Mario Ortiz, es miércoles y son las... Um, este, le hablo porque necesito su ayuda de este jueves de mañana en ocho días. Uh, necesito que me ayude a llevar unas cosas a, a Tijuana. Gracias, que pasen Bueno, well, we tarde. better go outside and get the van warmed up then. There's the nine o'clock. There's the nine o'clock bells. Huh? There's the nine o'clock bells. You're supposed to be there at nine. Here? I see a light in there. I see we might go around and... I'll walk around. Okay. The church is locked up. I don't know what's over to the church. I've never, never seen a church locked up before. Muy bueno. Hola. Dice la madre que hay ropa y comida que se van a llevar, que vamos a llevar a México. Okay. No podemos sacar. El problema es que yo no tengo llave de ahí. Ni de esta palabra, ni de ella tampoco. Ah, esa no está con llave. Se da vuelta la... I was thinking of telling you... 9.30, and making us uh, get here at 9.30 too. That way they'd be here and we wouldn't have to be doing this and checking the door of the church to find out it was locked and making cell calls at her. No, no big deal, it's always something, always something, huh, Andy? Yeah. We don't, we're used to that. Most of our help comes from the United States. And there are so many people in the United States that think that orphans and nuns only eat at Christmas time. And they only bring us things at Christmas time. <laughs> That's why here it is, in June, we're still going there. <laughs> Made a commitment that we would go and help, not just at Christmas time, but in January and February and March and April and May and June and instead of being Christmas Christians that bring food to the orphans at Christmas time. Bags of flour and bags of sugar and bags of beans and whole cases of uh, canned goods, canned Vegetables, canned food, all kinds of stuff. They're in good shape now. <laughs> Praise be to God. A lot of good people have come forward to help. Canta y no llore. Porque cantando se alegra cielito lindo los corazones. Mierti. You name it. And just about anything out there there is to be picked up, Angela will pick it up. Y muchas veces vivimos de eso. Fue la cantidad de pan que nos llevaba a la casa. People know his van three miles away. And they start gathering around when he comes up and... I've never seen so many little girls come out of the cracks of an orphanage to give this guy a hug. The one thing is he is making a huge difference and he's really needed. I mean, he does an awful lot, coordinates, brings a lot of stuff to them, helps out where most people just can't help out, really. Pues su mismo nombre lo dice Angelo, Angel. Sí, sí. He's a good man, but he's, he's a character. And I, I get scared every time he takes a new volunteer <laughs> out to Mexico with him. <laughs> All right, we got a green now. Let's go. Hey. <laughs> this guy in front of he is going to think you're a jerk. No, he's going to think I'm a jerk. Yes, he is. Last week, they gave me a bad time at the border. 
I don't know why I didn't take you with me. I, now I'm kind of glad I didn't. Uh, they held me up at the border. And what do you got there, mister? And where are you taking it, mister? And I mean, it's my understanding that this food, if it sat her over the weekend, it would be thrown out. A little thing like getting some bread across the border to some people who will end up eating it, and it takes a guy like this. Oh, yeah. We got another bag of it. Rice or... Uh, it's spaghetti. spaghetti. A little bitty spaghetti. Yeah. We get to moving things around. We find things that we thought we'd gotten rid of. Bye-bye. See you, you later. This is great, Ann. Good load. Oh, I wanted that closed so okay. I could pump that hole right there. See that? And it's going to be filled and all of it is going to be taken. It's not going to be any fuller than it was before. Stuffed under the seats, in the front, on the dash. You're sitting on it sometimes, you're smelling it all the time, and it doesn't always, it's it's not always, you know, you get a box, maybe after four or five boxes, you're going to find a loaf or two that's not good, and uh, you get some smells going on, you do, and then you get the mm. food. Guess what we forgot to take out yesterday? Strawberry and rhubarb pie. This is what we wanted for supper. If it's a small load, I come like a tourist and uh, and hope to fool the weighing machine. And with two big guys in front sitting on the seats, it kind of evens it out the low weight of the bread. So they open this up and see all that bread. Where do we park? Straight, straight, straight Just down. Keep going. Yep. Keep going to the stop sign. And another subversive smuggling job done. <laughs> That's so sad. You gotta act like a criminal to bring some bread across the border, man. Hay pan. Lo quieren. O lo llevo a otro sitio. Oh, Casa de los Pobres. Casa de los Pobres. That's what we serve every Friday except the first Friday of the month. We feed uh, almost it's uh, almost 500 people no? every day. They judge a can over age if it's past the date it's stamped on. On that side of the border. On this side of the border, they judge a can over age by opening it, tasting it. If it tastes good, it's not overage. I was just chit-chatting with Jack. He lives next door in that nice house. And that's how I met Angela. He was keeping her eye on me, make sure I'm not a, a pervert. He was <laughs> just monitoring the overall situation. And we and how we, we have become some of the best of friends that you know that you could ever have, you know. Yeah, yeah. I'll be sitting out here, you know, drinking a cup of coffee, you know, just, you know. You working today, Jamie? You wanna go to Mexico? Yeah, okay, you need help? Yeah. <laughs> he just throws me the keys. You <laughs> need something to do and you call Angelo. Angelo will do it, or he'll find a way of, of doing it. And of course, the only problem now is he's getting a little older and a little more tired and arthritic shoulder. And Angie's a bit younger than I, but not a lot. <laughs> Tony's the same age that I am. Other members of our, of our group who are my age or even less have, have already died. So, so, you know, we just have to keep some, I mean, when we're gone, somebody else will fill in. Es todo? Yo creo que sí. Sí. I mean, it's finished. I make a motion that the meeting be adjourned. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay. We pray tonight for all those who are in need. We pray for the people of Africa. And the terrible civil wars are still going on. Pray for the people of Colombia. We pray for the people in Peru with the general strikes. A brand new hood fan. Now that it's still in the box. Angie, come with me. See if you want this brand new hood fan. You want it? A what? A brand new hood fan. It's a hundred bucks. Hood. Fan. Yeah, nothing. It's not free, of course. Yeah, I'll show you. Put to the stove. 30-inch stove. Where would I sell this? Oh, no. Wouldn't the sister sell it at the garage sale? This is brand new. Would they sell it at the garage sale? Ask around on if she can sell it in Mexico. A water tank. Does it leak? A water tank. Okay, I'll switch it over. What would we use a water tank for? No, Let me don't. think a minute. Let me think. Okay, I don't know if those covers are anything good for anything. That's about it, I guess, Angie. You want to come over for a drink or, drink or something? Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Put some in that one. I don't. I can make more. You finish it up. There's only a little bit. There's just three drops left. You gave me a big glass. I don't make. I don't like to make it too sweet. This one sticky fly. Yeah. We don't usually have flies here. I'll have to take that in. They're all over us. We know place we can kill them. I know they either land on a cookie or they land on the edge of a glass. I know. Remember all those band-aids that we took down? Yeah. Oh them. boy. We had oh. thousands and thousands of band-aids. Hi, right, Charlie. Hi. We go down and take a lot of stuff down for the clinic and the churches and the queer people. Take as much as we can down. We he knows exactly. He can tell you exactly when when, when we met. And we've been doing it. He wants to know, my buddy Angelo, how we, we met and everything. Cause you got it down to the science. I don't remember all that. I but met yeah. him at a quarter after eight on the 5th of December of 1977. He got that exactly. And so that's it. From then this is on, we've been going down. When she was here in Tijuana, I, I got to get my picture with her and uh, get a picture of her so I could get by the border where she was very popular. I didn't have any trouble. I'd take anything across. I just stopped and I'd show this picture and I said, it's going to Mother Teresa. So I had no problem going across. And the trunks were all full of bread and the pickups. In fact, Ralph, he had it up this full. And there's still a whole bunch of stuff. He went and he got two pieces of plywood. He put one in here and he put one over there and he threw, he always got rope in his gut. And he threw a rope over to hold them together at the top, they wouldn't spread, and then he finished throwing things in, and it was maybe up to here with uh, food. And, uh, uh, that impressed me, that's how we met each other. Angelo, ay, es un ángel de la guarda para mi familia. Es como un padre para mí, para mis hijos. Y cuando oyen que tocan, todas se levantan corriendo porque es Ángelo, es Ángelo. Y ellas se ponen felices por, y les gusta. Y más que nada porque Ángelo las enseñó a manejar casi a todas, solo Teresa y a mí no, porque somos muy nerviosas. A la mejor alumna de Ángelo es Ana María. La ven, es un carro grande. Contigo es posible. Secretaría de Educación Pública. Pelnor, Pelnormanía es un fenómeno que está ocurriendo en tu ciudad. Son tres servicios que Telnor tiene para ti. Línea a
tecnológica de Tijuana. Educación de calidad con experiencia laboral. We don't, we never get many details on it. We just know that they've had to have put a thousand dollars worth of repairs into the van. And if he mentions it, oh well, somebody cut, but somebody cut in in front of me. The person who does the cutting is Angel. He shoots through lights. He he weaves in and out. You know. Sure, no, it's a seriousness. Um, I'm not going to be able to drive that thing to Mexico and back very soon. This, every time I drive it, it gets worse. I can drive it. I can go from home and go down to the store and get leaked or something. I can still drive, but I can't drive that. Long. I go to Mexico. If I were to drive to Mexico and back today, tonight, I would probably get to sleep two, three, four, four thirty-five in the morning, resting and resting my shoulder until it relaxed enough so I could sleep. I know that, and I think that some of the people that get my help need it badly enough that I'm willing to give up. Uh, yes, please. My understanding, he was born in Mexico, and um, never really, I don't think he had a father or a, a, lar a huge mother figure growing up. Um, pretty quick after he was born in Mexico, he moved up to San Jose. I want to say it's San Jose. I think he has a high school. I think he had high school, but I don't think he had any schooling beyond that. But for a person to, you know, make a career of the Navy, I would say he was very successful. He's, he started out without many breaks. And he loved it. He loved the Navy. So he re-enlisted. And then, of course, then he went up through the ranks and you know, ultimately became an officer. Spent you know, a lot of time traveling around. Eventually came back to San Diego and retired, and then he was able to start his work. <laughs> This is the place. Yep. This is called the Casa Hogar Santa Teresita. And then let's go say hello first. And... funny because I actually spent quite a bit of time with Lita as well, his wife, and you know, you see other sides of it, and because he's going and spending all this time with the little girl's orphanage and, and things like that, um, he's not into some of the things that Lita is, and you know, so as a result, you know, she goes and does her things and travels around with her sister, and Angelo stays here, and keeps going back and forth across the border. I, I don't think he can stop. I think he, he knows he accomplishes a lot. He does, he really enriches other people's lives a great deal. Why he does it to the extent of neglecting his own, I don't. I can't tell you, I don't know. His whole life is Mexico. Oh, there's no doubt in my mind whatsoever. If they were, I get home at 11 o'clock tonight, they were to call me and say, poor Alma's in pain and she got to get to the hospital and we don't have anybody else to take her. Would you come? There's not even any question in my mind. I'm up and in 30 seconds in the car and driving and, and dressing while I'm driving. And Ay, Dios bendito, ¿qué es eso? Mire, 
¿Estos también tienen que salir o ya están ahí? O uno, o no sé. El dentista que estudia estas cosas lo, Ay, nos va a decir. ¡Ay, Pero estos tienen que salir, así que estos tienen que salir. Estos tienen que salir porque... ¡Oh! Mucha... Problema. Don Ángel, ¿por qué saldrían tan feos? Mi... Ay, como si yo la tuviera tan bonita. <risa> Escuché a mi mamá lo que dijo. Tengo unos dientes tan feos. Pero los vamos a hacer bonitos. Para eso vamos a ir a ver el dentista. De desesperación. Se andaba golpeando en la pared los dientes para que se le cayeran. Uh -huh. Porque ya estaba traumada con los dientes que trae ahí. Pero ahora lo va a arreglar. ¿Cómo ve? Ahora lo voy a arreglar. Y se tumbó dos. Ya no tienes que hacer eso. Nunca me ha dicho cómo le hace. Ya le arregló los dientes a Alma. A ella también ya está trabajando con ella. Pero ella, él nunca me dice cómo le hace. Él se guarda eso. Está contento porque le van a arreglar sus dientes. Se miraba al espejo y decía, no, yo no quiero sus dientes, son bien feos. Y yo, sirve que te pareces a tu mamá. Ya, okay. yeah. take him to the dentist. This will be the third time already. Uh, it's gonna be a long time though, because we're gonna be taking little girl. Uh, at first, once a week for about two or three months, and then one, twice a month for the next year, year and a half. Wow. And you know what he costs, charges me for all that? One hundred dollars. For the whole shooting match? For the whole shooting match. Including the, the material he has to put in, including uh, the... So he's donating his time. Oh, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Mi diente. Era. Te lo quitaron. Era. Mi diente. The one that was with us today? Yeah. Oh no, those are her children. Well, I thought you said they were in the orphanage. When he abandoned the family, she couldn't even feed them. She didn't make enough money to feed them. And so she took all three of them into the orphanage and said, will you keep them for me? And they said, yes, we will. And they were raised in her orphanage because she couldn't feed them. Then she started working unloading trucks first. Can you imagine unloading trucks for 32 cents an hour? Please. I mean, big lugs of food. And she used to steal some of the fruit and vegetables off the truck to bring home. She's now a little bit better off, but she has to abandon them because she goes and works in La Jolla four days a week. There's probably some family in La Jolla that has tons of money, too. Yeah. Does she cook for them, too? Cook. Yeah. Cleans the house. Yep. Washes the dishes. And how much does she get paid for that? $110 a week. Oh, that's, a, that's terrible. In La Jolla? In La Jolla. Yeah. Let's get to the right lane. The lane to the yeah. right. Ah. Give me a shot at it. Okay. Thanks. Good. Let me Because see if I can... It's going to be uh, two or three weeks from now, and I want to give you the keys, and I'm going to say, you've got, you've got it now, Larry. I can't go today. Good for you. Just make sure there's a little letter on file. It says I'm authorized to drive this. Absolutely. Thing. You'll have it in your possession.
because if we hadn't gotten in the <laughs> speed lane, we'd have been way up there. <laughs> If you don't, he's going to get over. Get up closer. You know, you're, you're almost six feet away from that guy. You think, go, 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 go. He won't go if you go. Go! He's going... Oh, well, you don't want to go home. Okay. That guy with an uh, Oregon lane, Oregon plates. He says, that's the tree of freedom, buddy. Why are you donating your time? Well, I'm trying to make up for being a sinner, man. That's what I'm trying to do. Well, I think most of us are that way. I think most of us recognize that we have some shallow places. <laughs> Is that a good way to put it, Dan? There we go. And we do good works, works of mercy, uh, trying to atone for them. There you go. I'd say that just about hit the nail right on the head. Yep. When he retires, I don't know if they're that they're not going to have all those needs. I don't think will be filled as well as uh, he can do it. So I sure hope he doesn't retire. I sure hope he doesn't come in. Well, okay, he he loves going to Mexico so much. I don't he just loves it. You know, the little girls at the uh, orphanage, they all love him. Uh, he'll probably die with his boots on, <laughs> to tell you the truth. No one Angelo. Yeah. He's no quitter. I think I gotta quit. <laughs> I haven't played in a long time. My lip is already gone. Sure. Yes, I like this too. I just got to the Christmas songs that I love. It came upon a midnight clear that joyous song of old. And it's even prettier on a trumpet. I could play, I'd get somewhere, man. That's how it started, and he's been doing that ever since for I don't know how many years, 20 years now? 25. Like, 25 uh, last, years now. Last November. Yeah, last over December, there. He he's, he's grew up with the kids over there. But this is a little aside that I want to throw in. In Mexico, they make the holy water a little different, or they work, they have they program it a little different. You know how they do that? They boil the hell out of it. <laughs> well, I just wanted to do that. I'll go check. Okay. <laughs>